Welcome back. It's only been a couple of seconds. Be careful when you pull this thing out. It likes to stick you. Stuck my pinky pretty good. That is a hell of a long spring. I was not expecting this much spring length. Um, so that's where you're getting your mega pull for your mega dart. Um, follower spring is jumping out already. Get the little wing ding over there. Pull that thing out. Oh, it looks like I can't. Interesting. Okay, so this entire system here is the plunger uh, tube, and I was correct in my previous assumption. Um, if you look, there we go. See those little three doodads? When you push down on those, they will open this tube to the air. There you go. And then... Pull that down. Roll that up. There's your actual plunger. It's built inside. Falls down. Falls back. And you can see the plunger there. So that's interesting. Um, I'm gonna rip that damn air restrictor right out of there because that's just stupid. I don't see a purpose to having the air restrictor even in there as a function because that's intentionally flushing the air back into the plunger tube, which is what's causing all that rattle, which is causing the internals of the gun to shake. It should be exiting the barrel whether you fire it or not Maybe they feel like it's too much air. And you got that big ass tube right there. So, I'm gonna check out a couple things. Add some more to the other end of my box. So we don't lose anything. All right. One mega dart. Down the center. I think what's going to piss me off about this build is I don't have a way to access that post. Let's do that down. And I want that post out. I think that post is going to be a problem. I'm probably going to end up having to dremel along here. If you are familiar with the Fortnite sniper rifle. That is uh, what I'm looking at for a tube do that the air that's a pretty pretty solid fit I just wish there was a way I could open this thing and what is the purpose of this spring what does it do It doesn't do anything. It's not holding anything. See? It's it's not holding. This is a solid piece that doesn't move. It's literally springing together the plastic. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't hook to anything. And again, I still can't pull the trigger. Let me move the phone down here for better recording. In fact, I will exchange weights. There you go. Okay, so we push the two buttons down. Hey, we got kind of a trigger pull. Yep. So the black is your trigger pull. I have no idea what the orange does. That is a hell of a spring. I was just not expecting that much spring down there. So 
So at the base of the barrel, again, you have your black. Now this is supposed to be down when firing and it springs up. What prevents it from going all the way is, aha! It goes that direction. So the spring is constantly under tension. Christ, I was not even considering this as a... Of course, I don't technically need this. No, there has to be something that is connecting from trigger pull or from slide. Because when you slide, this comes forward and holds it. So there's something in there. There's some part that is going to trigger. Oh, would you look at that? I didn't see that move. That's interesting. Now, why would that move? <laughs> there you go. Fire blaster. I don't know if you can see I'm pulling back on it. <laughs> but see, it should be at full extension once the slide's out. It should be at full extension. Because that part sits right there. That part sits right there. I'm positive of it. Of course, as Robin Williams has told us, only fools are positive. going you sit there and you take it <laughs> systems back under strain and when the system's back under strain there's something in there that's forcing the check it out that's not being touched by the dart in fact here's a Here's a better look straight down the barrel. See, the dart's not touching that thing. Something is actively put... Sorry about that, it cut off. Something is actively putting a strain on this black piece down here. And I'm not sure what, and I'm not sure where. My only thought is that it's something that has to do with the final wing. Because actually the final wing side, yeah, that's it. The final wing side has some sort of a mechanism that's different than the rest of the, the screw. Give me just a second. Close your eyes for those who get seasick. Seasick. All right. Take a look. This rod on the outside right here looks the same on the inside. But at the bottom you have some kind of toothed system that is connected right there. 
and it's even connected differently. Oh, sorry about that. Looking with my eyes, not the camera. It's even connected differently here than it is up here. So there's something in there that is causing some sort of uh, grip. Uh, I am running out of battery power. It is getting later, and I don't want to go any further tonight as I have encountered a mystery that I do not yet understand. Therefore, no reason to push ahead. After all, we have COVID. We ain't going anywhere anytime soon. This is what you do with your free time. So, <clears throat> for those who are watching, all none of you, at least at the moment, um, we've taken apart the Mega Magnus. The Mega Magnus is a pretty powerful um, hand cannon style internal magazine blaster. Uh, here is the follower spring. This will not work in the tube magazine, but it might work as part of the uh, lifting mechanism for the spoon. We will have to see. I don't really understand the mechanics of the spoon yet. I'm still trying to get there. Spoon man. Um, other things we've discovered that the little black part up here, which is how you press down on the mega dart to force it onto the air restrictor, is actioned apparently through the bolt, but I'm not sure where. Also, the slide... Excuse me, let me get my finger in there. The slide here is somehow, for some strange, bizarre reason, spring-loaded. But we don't really know why that is loaded either, because it doesn't seem to do anything. Finally, um, as I pointed out via the dart, I don't believe there's a need for an air restrictor in the system. I don't believe there's a need for a pokey thing down in the middle of this tube. Because the air should just be allowed to flow into the dart area and out the barrel. By them building air restrictors into these blasters, I understand that what they're trying to do, supposedly, is uh, limit the amount of damage they can do. Again, what? But since this is targeted more towards young adults people who are supposed to be responsible and understand how they're going to have to go work their butt off to pay for a window. I would expect a smarter air restrictor system. And in fact, we did get one. The problem is, is that we don't need one. It's actually damaging to the components of the gun because it's forcing all the air that's supposed to be going that way back into the system, which is trying to at the same time push it out. So you have equal forces, basically, fighting with each other which is just going to tear things up inside the gun. Then it comes out and rattles around inside the blaster. I am going to remove the air restrictor. When I do that, there should no longer be a need for the dart. I don't even know if I can get that dart out of there right now. Little bits at a time. Little bits at a time. There we go. There should no longer be a need for the dart to come back and press on those posts which will allow the air flow in. At the same time, that means that I probably don't need the uh, rod in here because that rod doesn't even appear to have any kind of interaction with the dart. And if it does, pull that out carefully as it is under pressure. See, the black came right back up. You know what? I think that's it right there. Hmm? Didn't that move just now? No? What about here? No? <laughs> You've got me. I have no idea how that's moving. There would have to be a part that's interacting with something. It have to do with it pressing back here? I don't see it. All right, whatever. But this rod, this rod here doesn't appear to even be wide enough. In fact, I know it isn't. Look at that. That rod's not even affecting the dart. 
the dart's actually being pinched back where that circle is. Oops, sorry. Again, I keep using my eyes instead of the camera. That rod, let me see here. You can see the circle right here. That appears to be where it pinches the dart. So, potentially, yeah, see, I would lose power if I do that, though. Damn you, Nerf. Why the hell did you do this? It's such a horrible idea. Is there a way to... God has put together, let no Hasbro take apart. All right. I'm going to have to dremel this son bitch in half. I'm going to have to cut it in half and put it back together so I can get at that air restrictor. Because I can't cut this tube because this tube is how the air is pushing into the dart. I've got to keep that tube as thick as possible. And that's not what I want to do because that means I'm going to have an issue picking up a dart. when I pump prime because in a shotgun if we look at this as if it's a shotgun you're loading the tube back here so you already see the difference here's your internal magazine this slide this slide here is meant to pick up at the front of the gun not at the rear things to work on things to consider Ladies and germs, that's good for day four. Um, I doubt you had fun, but hopefully it was a learning experience. It certainly was for me. And I will catch you with day five. One last thing real quickly before the train arrives. I removed the screw that was keeping the major launch mechanism in place. Oh, the major launch mechanism in place. I do not know how I'm gonna get in there to that air restrictor. I don't, because everything that I can think of is going to destroy it. But, functionally, this is what I need. The problem is this is not going to work. I'm not going to be able to get a three-shot tube, even though the tube is long enough, because this system here extends too far forward. I will continue to think about it, work on it, and get back to you later.